Hey guys, Josh here from Sportitude Running and today isn't your traditional shoe review. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be diving into the carbon plate phenomena. So in front of me here under the camera, I've got a long list of shoes with carbon plates in them. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be discussing why they even exist in the first place. They've obviously replaced racing flats, but what they actually do from a performance benefit perspective, and also discuss the super foams, um, which is encapsulating those carbon plates, and more to the point, what they actually do as well. And then finally, to wrap it up, we're actually going to talk to you through about the process in which we go through when we're fitting a carbon plate shoe, because... Believe it or not, we don't actually sell a carbon plate shoe to anyone who asks. You need to essentially qualify to actually have one on your foot. And we'll take you through all of those little questions in today's review. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay guys, before we get stuck into the carbon plates and all the super foams and the why, let's talk about the history of carbon plate shoes. Now Adidas had a crack at it in the early 2000s, didn't work, they moved on. Fast forward around 15 years, and in May 2017, Nike essentially had that first crack at the breaking to our marathon barrier with Elliot Kipchoge and doing it in the 4%. Now, I happen to hold my pair here that I got a couple of years ago, and this was essentially the second version of that shoe with the fly knit upper. Now, the brand itself, Nike, really didn't just obviously pour a couple of ingredients into a beacon and then pop there is a shoe, let's go ahead with it. They had a few years in regards to executing the ZoomX midsole. So really dialing in on the super foam that was going to complement that carbon plate. And obviously when they came to market with that race and obviously using the fastest guy to ever cover the marathon distance, the whole world went in a spin. Everyone wanted to run faster. Everyone wanted to have a carbon plate shoe on their foot. Now, Nike had the monopoly there. They owned that market and they had a good three year plus head start on everyone else. This leads us to today, 2021. We have a whole heap of options in that carbon plate category. Now, for you, the runners out there, what we need to do is basically dial in to finding out what they all do and why they even exist. So let's talk about a carbon plate shoe in comparison to a racing flat. Now racing flats were essentially training shoes de spec taking midsole components out, outsole components out, making a shoe nice and light on top to reduce the weight. And that's how we achieved a nice light and resp responsive feel underneath our foot. Now that certainly works and it still works today. But what the carbon plates actually do and the super foams do, it actually takes load off of the body and reduces the risk of onset fatigue essentially. And with that, you get a performance benefit. Now, does that mean it's going to work for every single runner out there? No, it doesn't. But there are some serious benefits behind purchasing a carbon plate shoe for a minimal amount of training, but obviously for race day. Now, when we talk about all brands, I'm not just pigeonholing Nike here. Every single brand that have released a carbon plate shoe in the last couple of years have obviously done their due diligence and their testing has been done on their elite athletes. They are trying to make their race day shoes faster and they're going to be trying to get them onto their sponsored athletes. So when you start thinking about that as a percentage in global running community, we're talking about the minority of the minority. So people who are probably running at a state level, a national level, and obviously an international level, anywhere from five kilometer road right up to your marathon distance. So we're really talking about the elite of the elite. The elite. All right, we've talked about carbon plates. Now, just to dial in in two ticks, there is a couple of different varieties with carbon plates as well with regards to the thickness, how they're positioned within the midsole in regards to the propulsion benefit you're going to get. But the big topic of discussion is the super foams because not a lot of you would know, but the, the actual foam itself does the lion's share of the work underneath the foot. The carbon plate is certainly there to assist the performance of that super foam. But the foam itself is going to give you the compression and the response and the carbon plate aids in that movement pattern. So when we're talking of the foam, so I'm just going to name a couple here. So holding the next percent version two in my hand, Zoom X, that is Nike's super foam. When you're talking about another brand, we're going to hold up the Brooks Hyperion Elite DNA Flash with a nitrogen infused midsole. Power Run PB from Socony in the Indoor from Pro. And we've got Flight Foam Turbo from ASICS, which was just released here in the Metaspeed Sky. 
And not to mention, or not leave one out, sorry, I feel a little bit bad, but New Balance RC Elite, the fuel cell midsole, is not too dissimilar to what Nike have released with the Zoom X foam. So there's a couple of different varieties with regards to foams underneath the foot, as there are with the carbon plate thickness and positioning as well. Okay, guys, let's talk about the carbon plate shoes I've got in front of me. So what I'll do first is I'm going to talk to you about shoes that may have more of a traditional racing flat feel to them. So when we're talking about that, obviously, you're not going to be talking about a high stack a really soft foam, you're going to be talking about lightweight and a really good connection with the ground. So, a couple of shoes that come to mind are the On Running Cloud Boom, this shoe here, the Adi Zero Pro from Adidas, and I'd also throw in the Brooks Hyperion Elite version 1 into that same category. So, all those three shoes I've just mentioned are certainly light, the carbon plate injected through the midsole, but they're firmer underneath the foot. And the stack is a little bit less as well, so you're slightly closer to the ground. So you're going to have that more of a traditional racing flat feel underneath the body. Next category we're going to talk about is what I would sort of push towards training. Now, the two shoes that I'm going to grab here could also be used for racing. I'm not going to rule that out at all, but their whole engineering componentry has been designed for that of training. So I hold the Hoka Aneone Carbon X in my hand through here. So full length carbon plate on their ProFly midsole. However, this shoe here has a really aggressive rocket. It sort of plays on what Hoka are known for. So underneath the foot, it's slightly firmer. It's certainly not as firm as the other category with regards to the lower profile racing flats, but it's not quite as soft as your super foams. But this shoe certainly has a place in the market. Marginally heavier in comparison to the others that we're gonna talk through today, but a more of a traditional training shoe feel. So higher stack, a little bit more shoe under your body, but that carbon plate does really provide a smooth transition through the whole gait cycle. The other one we're gonna talk about is the Magic Speed. Now this shoe here has only just launched and it's very unique in regards to its carbon plate engineering. It's a three quarter carbon plate, really dialing in on that four foot propulsion. So this shoe has a flight foam midsole underneath the foot. It's got a relatively generous stack height underneath through here. However, the componentry of this shoe is probably more to complement mileage training. It's a shoe that you could potentially use for some sessions, some quicker tempo runs out there, but get that carbon plate, that responsive propulsive feel through the forefoot. It's again, not the, uh, not the lightest out of the category we're talking about through here, but another one to throw into this conversation is the endorphin speed, for example. That happens to have a plastic plate, but it's got that same concept. It can be used for a little bit of um, tempo training and also maybe some mileage running, but its engineering um, philosophies are all about complementing your training. Next category of carbon plate shoes I'm going to talk about are probably the softer, more popular carbon plate shoes. Now, I'll hold up in no particular order. Next percent V2, Metaspeed Sky, and the RC Elite. Now, those three shoes right there all have full-length carbon plates, but the foam underneath the foot is slightly softer. So you get that really squishy and responsive feel underneath the body. And the next two super shoes I'm going to talk about have a slightly firmer um, fit underneath the foot. Not quite as soft as the other three. We're talking Hyperion Elite version 2 from Brooks and the Endorphin Pro here from Socony. Now, you might be raising some eyebrows at home and saying, well, I've got this or I've got this and I find it quite soft. Well, that is true. They're certainly not the firmer shoes on, on the market or in this category, but they're not quite as soft. They don't compress as much as the other three, being the Next Percent, RC Elite, and also the Metaspeed Sky from ASICS. Okay, the next um, topic of discussion is if you're coming in and you're looking to buy a carbon plate shoe, we're going to straight up ask you, why? Why do you want to buy a carbon plate shoe? Now, that may sound like a very stupid question, but it's very, very important. We need to understand what you're actually intending to do with this shoe. Now, if you're just going to buy one for mileage training and get out there and do all your runs in them, we will convince you otherwise. However, if you're looking for a little bit more from your training regime, be it something to complement your mileage running with some tempo runs or some interval running, and obviously for race day. This, the shoes that we've talked about, bar the couple that could be used for some training, are really a shoe that you may only go through once every two years, and that's in all honesty. Unless you're running a marathon, four or five marathons a year, you're probably only gonna go through a super shoe once every 18 months, give or take. Now, 
The reason we ask that is we need to know, are you doing 5K on the road? Are you doing 10Ks, half marathons or marathons or triathlons? We need to understand who you are as a runner and what you are trying to achieve with your racing. So now, given that fact as well, we're also going to ask you some questions about your shoe history because if you're coming from you know, generally high stack shoes, you're probably going to want a pretty similar characteristic with your, your race shoe as well that's going to complement that. If you're coming from more of a lower drop, low profile daily trainer, well, you're probably going to find something like a next percent too high of a stack and too soft underneath your body. So we're trying to introduce change into your shoe selection, but not completely reverse the system here. You need to have some familiar characteristics with your race day shoes. And also the other thing to consider is the carbon plate, right? So the carbon plate does make the shoes a lot stiffer underneath the foot. So if you haven't had anything like this before and you've maybe been racing for a number of years, well, this might be too much change for you at this point in time. So what we may do is we may introduce a shoe like the Endorphin Speed, for an example, which has got a plastic plate. Still got that really snappy, responsive feel underneath the body, but that shoe might just be a sort of a easier progression for you to make your way to a lighter carbon plate shoe. So um, there's a few things that we do obviously like to check off to make sure that you fit that category. The other really important factor is knowing that the carbon plate shoes or the racing shoes are not going to do it for you. You've still got to do the training. You've still got to recover well. You've still got to concentrate on your nutrition and everything and above. So with that in mind, obviously, we do want that placebo effect, right? We just want that quick fix come in, get a fast shoe, and all of a sudden, I'm going to be running and smashing my PVs. Now, the carbon plate shoes, guys, are literally there, almost like the cherry on top of a very, very well-planned, well-thought-out training, nutrition, and recovery program. They certainly work, but there's a lot more that goes into making those PBs achievable for you, the runner out there. Another thing to keep in mind is we are talking about lighter weight shoes. So if you're thinking about coming in and wanting a carbon plate shoe or a racing shoe to give you an element of support, you can almost scrunch that piece of paper up and throw it in the bin because we're taking aspects out of these shoes to make them lighter. Yes, there's some structure and integrity within the midsole with that carbon plate and it does feel slightly stable underneath your foot, but a lot has come out of this shoe from like a traditional running shoe to make them lighter, to make them snappier and to make them responsive. So what we have found and we will continue to find with racing shoes, there is more range of movement, there's a higher velocity of movement through that transition and that is simply there to reduce your ground contact time, to increase your responsiveness and obviously get you running faster for longer. Okay guys, in summary, Basically, we owe Nike a little bit of thanks. So if it wasn't for them back in 2017 and the first attempt at breaking two, and obviously Elia Kipchoge, this whole carbon plate boom may not be a thing. So they obviously invested a considerable amount of money in that project and it worked. And obviously brands jumped onto that bandwagon and have produced all of their own versions of the super shoes and we stand here today in 2021 with a lot of options. Now, the purpose of your carbon plate shoes is obviously to make them lighter and faster, take load off of your feet and body and to reduce the onset of fatigue. And just remember, they are lighter, they're race day shoes, so we're taking componentries out. Don't think you're going to get a sustainable amount of stability out of these shoes because you're not. They are designed to go fast and to be incredibly responsive. So if you're looking for some extra support, maybe have a conversation with yourself and have a conversation with a salesperson about lighter shoes and might offer a little bit more support. And please be careful with subjective reviews out there. Now, I say that because a lot of people use YouTube as a platform to voice their opinion on running shoes, and that is absolutely fine. Take everything with a grain of salt and make sure that you only listen to stuff that is relevant to you, the runner. Individually, that is, of course. So thank you for tuning in in today's Carbon Plate discussion. I hope it's been of a benefit. If you've got any questions, queries, comments, or theories, drop it in the comments section below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do hit the red button down below. And until next time, guys, stay safe, happy running, be kind to each other, and we'll see you out in the road. Take care.